Urban LTZ. Black exterior, black interior. She is clean. Oh my goodness. Wonderful truck. Wonderful truck. Uh, Shay did a good job with um, a lot of features, a lot of uh, tech smart features, a lot of safety features, you know, a lot of just pretty much uh, making the driver feel safe and comfortable, uh, I would definitely say. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some parts about the Chevy Suburban that aren't so great. And we're going to talk about all those from an owner standpoint. Okay. As you see, this is black exterior, uh, LTZ model again, uh, 22 inch rims. Okay. I mean, look at them things. Look at them. They, they clean. 22 inch rims. Okay. Now, understand that if you have 22 inch rims, your ride, your ride is going to be a little rougher than somebody that has 20s or 17s because they have more tire, more tire wall or sidewall in order to absorb those uh, bumps, okay? Again, 22 inch rims all the way around. Factory tent, I mean, it's pretty dark. And this is this is daylight, I mean, this is natural sunlight. And you see how dark it is, except for the passenger driver's side, okay? It's not, to me, it looks like a, 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 a tuxedo, okay? Like a tuxedo. Um, it's not too much chrome. And it's not too less of chrome. This is a perfect amount. I mean, sure, you can go out and get you an Escalade and, and have, or a, a Yukon Denali, and have the whole entire thing covered up in chrome. But sometimes it's too much, okay? I mean, and another thing too, fixed running boards. Now, sure, we could have got the option of the motorized running boards, but you gotta, you gotta think about it, okay? That's more equipment that has the potential of going or breaking, especially if it's electronic, okay? Uh, what if your motor goes out, now your steps are stuck in the down position or they're stuck in the up position, you know? Versus you have it fixed. It's fixed right there, folks. It's fixed, okay? It's not gonna go nowhere. I mean, look, it's sturdy. It's sturdy. Now, sure, if you're gonna go out there four by four and a four wheeling, um, you could potentially probably bend it, crack it. But I mean, look at this. I'm not taking this, is not going four by four wheeling. It's not. Okay? It's not. So, HIDs, which I thought it says high and low. I thought the HID was the high and the low, but actually, the HID is the low, and the high is the bottom light you see underneath the projector. That's the high, which is a normal halogen. Not a fan of it, but it's not going to uh, deter my uh, experience or driving this, okay? As you see, we got the, the pump, I mean the uh, parking sensors right there. You can see them. You got the parking sensors all throughout the front to protect you when you park in your vehicle in the uh, parking lot, okay? Now, I'm not sure. I mean, if you guys can see how low that is. I'm using my hand, for example. That's thumb to the ground. It's not much. I'm not sure why Chevy did that uh, for it to be a four-wheel drive vehicle. I can definitely see that becoming an issue, um, hitting things in the, you know, hitting dirt, almost becoming like a, a, a shovel or a plow, you know, depending on what you're doing. Um, again, it is four-wheel drive capable. And sure, you can take it off road, but don't be surprised if you might rip your front bumper off or definitely rip that lower spoiler off. Okay. Uh, so let's get into the features. All right. So you notice you don't see a windshield wiper. Guess what? It's under there. Oh, it's hard to see. It's tucked under here, folks. Underneath the spoiler, right here. This is where the uh, windshield wiper, the rear windshield wiper, is at. It's located. Okay. Um, uh, you also see here. You got 
your rear parking sensors in the back. You got your tow hitch cover right here to make it nice and clean, okay? Your buttons. Now, one thing that's cool about the uh, 2016 Suburban, I believe it's on the 2015 as well, is they brought back the ability to um, open your window for the rear hatch instead of the whole entire hatch. Now, granted, you have both options, but let me demonstrate to you, okay? Here's rear hatch. The button's located under here. Hit that. Boom. Pops. There you go. Okay. Now, again, there is the uh, rear windshield wiper. Okay. That's where it's located at. And, you know, I was just looking. I was like, hold on. How is this visible here? But it's not getting water into the cab. Well, you see this plate right here? It seals it out from outside. So just learn some uh, while doing this review. Okay. Shut it back. Ooh, my hand's frozen. Now, I don't like the fact that you kind of got to slam it in order to get it to shut. But again, hey, that's... It's cool having the feature being open the window instead of opening the hatch because you want to hurry and throw some in there and get going. Okay, and open the hatch, go down here, push a button, and voila, there she goes. She's open. Okay, it's a lot of space back here. You know, I have a family of five, and this is plenty. Now, we're going from a GMC Acadia to the Suburban, and as you can see, it's it's beautiful. It's so spacious. I mean, I have a, a Nunamix full stroller in here. I got a, a baby emergency kit here. I mean, as you see, <clears throat> got my Mavic Pro for drone footage. Another thing that's cool about this vehicle is the feature of being able to have automatic folding seats. You just push a button. We're gonna fold these seats down. Just push a button. Look at that. Just like that. Up, oh, let's put some groceries or let's put a long box, lay it down here, and let's get going. And then you want to bring it back up. Boom. There you go. Now, I'm not going to take this one all the way down. Well, actually, we'll take it down because the uh, seat belt, as you see right there, is disconnected. And normally, if you had three passengers in there, that seat belt would be connected into the, um, the lap of the seat right here. But it's not. Okay, which allows us to be able to fold the seat all the way down. Here we go. Up. Oh, and you see that. The reason why I stopped is because the headrest is up. Now, we lower that headrest. Let's try that again. Boom. There she goes all the way down. Chevy, you did a fantastic job with this option. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> fantastic. Now, one thing that's awesome about this vehicle, also, Chevy realized this is going to be a, a family vehicle. Okay, sure, some executives or the companies use it to transport workers, you know, business, business execs, you know, that kind of sort of people. But when you are a family man and you have a family, you have small kids, Spills are going to happen. Um, markers, crowns, you name it. It's going to get in the vehicle. No matter how much you try to prevent it. Okay? But one thing that's cool about this 2016 Chevy Suburban is a feature of this material. It's plastic. Just like this. It's plastic. Now, here, that's actual uh, a cloth headliner. Okay, but this is plastic. So if you get something on it, you can always wash it, wipe it down. You ain't got to worry about staining the headliner. Because as you all know, if you get a stain on the headliner, they say get some like, uh, I think it's Folex. And then uh, pretty much dab it on there on a cloth, dab it on there to get it out. It ain't going to come all the way out. And you know, if you spray directly on the headliner, you're going to loosen up the adhesive and... Eventually, you're going to have the typical sagging headliner. Who wants that? So Chevy was very smart about uh, allowing this to be plastic all the way, if you could tell, 
all the way around the entire vehicle. Okay. Now under here, it's a storage compartment. I'm not gonna take all this stuff out, but there's a storage compartment under here. And you hit this little lever right here and fold it up, and you can store your um, you can store your jumper cables, um, toe straps, you name it. You can store things in it. It's not super deep like a trunk, but it's deep enough to uh, store small things so it doesn't take up your uh, space, your cargo space. Okay. Um, and the shutter hatch got a little button right here. Push it. Boom. There she goes. And that's your backup camera right there. Right there. Got to give a shout out to uh, Castrucci, Milford, Chevrolet up there in Ohio. People were amazing. Amazing people to work at. My, my sales rep, Lou. If you go up there, folks, <laughs> and you want to buy a Chevy, go see Lou. Lou is the man. They take care of you. I mean, I flew in to Ohio. They picked me up from the airport, drove me there, had the paperwork ready, had the vehicle clean, detailed, ready to go. Because they knew I was driving back from Ohio back to Georgia. So, I mean, an awesome dealership. Uh, also, Lou didn't hide anything. If you found, if I had found something, Lou took care of it right away. He didn't try to do like typical salesman say, oh, can't do anything about it, whatever. They took care of me. They, it was a problem, they fixed it. And if they couldn't fix it, they had another plan on how um, it can get taken care of. So definitely, I gotta give a shout out to, uh, correction, not Dale Chevrolet, uh, Mike Castrucci Chevrolet in Milford, Ohio. Again, that's, there he is. Okay, look him up. All right, you see here, got the LTZ. Oh, chrome looking so clean. I'd say this is a clean paint job. I mean, the chrome with the black uh, paint, it's just, it, it looks very clean, very executive. You got Suburban right here, okay? Automatic folding mirrors, which I'm gonna show you once we get an inside. 4G LTE Wi-Fi capable. Now, as a family man, that is a huge, huge plus. Because y'all always got your kids asking you, hey, Mom, Dad, can you turn on your Wi-Fi hotspot? There you go, draining the battery. You're draining the battery, and next thing you know, <laughs> the kids are like, Oh, Mom, uh, the, the Wi-Fi is gone. Can you turn it back on? Yeah, my battery's dead, so I can't turn it back on. Okay. Um, and then also, they got rid of the the antenna whips now you got this little shark fin i think it's cool i think it's real cool it's real sleek it's it's not out of place i mean sure you could probably put it in the middle but it's fine where it's at it does its job okay <clears throat> without further let's go inside let's check this bad boy out <sighs> look at this and tell me that is not a clean clean door panel you got the little wood. And yes, it's not real wood, but hey, the look it gives is very clean. It's elegant type. Here you got your typical window controls, door locks, child locks. No longer have to do it from the door, jam. Window locks, your mirror controls. Push this button. Both mirrors fold in, okay? Push it again, they fold out, okay? That's your door lock right there. Memory seats for the wife and the husband, okay? Or if it's just you, you're number one, all right? Here's a, the uh, driver's seat. Driver's seat controls on the side. Weather mats, highly recommend getting those to preserve your actual carpet, okay? Trunk release, I mean, let's get in this vehicle. Whew. Oh man, it's cold out there. Mm. Sorry, folks. All right, so, all right, we're inside the cabin of the 2016 Chevy Suburban. Now you see most of your controls right here for the driver. You got, like I said, this is a four wheel drive, two wheel, auto, four wheel high, four wheel low. Your auto beam for your headlights, dimmer switch. And this feature, folks, you're probably not used to. 
it's called heads up display hood okay and when you see it you see let me see if I can move it for you folks it's a heads up display it displays your speed uh, Bluetooth connected your songs RPMs radio station whatever you choose to select that's what it's going to uh, display okay now one thing that's cool about this vehicle also you have your safety features right here okay park assist lane departure warning trash control and adjustable footsteps trailer brake okay again four-wheel drives that comes with it when you have the four-wheel drive package all right steering wheel controls the talk hang up phones the select for the four inch lcd screen that, that's cool i mean look at that folks that is cool let's switch let's let's take a look at it engine hours now this is also cool this is the off-road uh information display it pretty much tells you how much degrees do we have the front wheels turn the pitch of the vehicle the angle of the vehicle if you're going uphill downhill so to help let you know whether or not okay you know i'm pushing the limits of my vehicle i have potential of rolling it over or you know tipping it over all right um trailer brake gain speed limit lets you know what's the posted speed limit based off of gps fuel used mpg uh best you see folks is 22.4 average 14.5 honestly um driving long distance with this vehicle i think i average probably around 15 to 17 miles per gallon again it's all about how you drive you know if you drive 10 miles over the speed limit and it happens to be 80 or you happen to drive the speed limit it's going to change whether or not you are getting great gas mileage period all right um now let's keep it going tire pressure i love this feature because i hate cars that have a tire pressure monitoring system and lets you know oh one of your tires are low but it doesn't tell you which tire so i gotta go check all four tires to find out which one tire is low out of pressure awesome this is an awesome feature okay fuel range now how y'all can see here the let me tilt this up the v8 feature right here it says v8 right here okay now this has a cylinder deactivation feature when you're going downhill or the vehicle's on a flat uh, surface and it's, it doesn't require all eight cylinders it downs it detunes it down to four cylinders which increases your fuel economy i mean i wish you had this back in the day but for this big vehicle it makes it the perfect vehicle for a road trip okay now you got if you want to calculate how long the trip was, the average fuel count for that trip, you have A and B, okay? And then back to the speedometer, okay? Now, you have the different modes if you want to change it. This is the technology setting, okay? It's a technology setting for your uh, driver indication. Now, if you want to change that, go here, go to settings. Nope, we don't want to do that. Let's go down technology now if we want to go to the standard look you hit standard and that's a typical gauge face that we all are used to seeing get out of this there you go that's a typical gauge face again this is an entire LCD screen these are the only fixed gauges you have here okay that is an entire screen. Let's bring it back to how I had it. And here we go, we're back to it. All right, continue. <clears throat> the entertainment system here, my link, it's, it's a great inf uh, infotainment system. I mean, I went from the Infinity, which Infinity was so dated. They use, they still today use the same interface with the exception of the Q50s, the Q60s. They have their own. Uh, but if you have like an M37 or also known as a uh, Q30, 
70, you have the same infotainment system from 2010, 12, 13, 14. It's, it's ridiculous, okay? Now, oh, why does, so here we go. You got the screen. You want to change it to, uh, here's a home. Okay, go home. You got the audio, phone, projection. That's more for Apple people to have an Apple phone. I'm an Android user. Navigation, boom, hit it. And there you go. You're in navigation. Okay. Bring it back to home. And then you can choose Pandora, the weather. Let's see what the weather's saying. 29 degrees. Okay, it's currently 31 degrees outside. It is getting cold for this new year. Bring it back home. This is a speed control for the heating and air conditioning. All right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna break down every little piece of this, okay? You, you have the vehicle, if you own the vehicle, <clears throat> you've owned the vehicle, you know different switches, you know, you wanna blow the air on your feet, on your on your face, or in the defrost area, okay? <clears throat> this is the mirror. You got the OnStar. You got the, I'm not sure what this is. I never used that before. Then you got the SOS, all right? Here's the controls for the sunroof, the lighting, the compartment lighting, and then also for your garage doors, and then for your hatch. Now, one thing that's cool about this, you push the button and it opens the hatch. Now, you see it says max, three quarters, off. That's based on how far you want the hatch to open up. Um, sunglass storage, up a little bit. And then now you have a mirror to see all your passengers in the back to see what the kids are doing all right sunroof had to have it you know i mean i don't we're not gonna use it anytime soon because again it's cold out here um there's your mic for your bluetooth when you're talking to folks um your compartments two usb 12 volt okay nice little storage i don't want to put the keys in here drink storage okay now this is wireless charging for Androids and capable for Apple phones, okay? My phone, unfortunately, is in the case. So um, one thing that sucks about the case is it doesn't charge when it's in the case. The phone has to actually be out there onto the surface and it'll start charging wirelessly, okay? Coming here, it's a lot of storage. Coin, oops, sorry, coin holder, two more USBs, more storage, another 12 volt connection pull this shelf out and look how deep that is this is where we keep our headphones for the kids that is deep i mean if you're a mom that pumps like my wife this is the perfect hidden spot you can put your pump and and not take up space inside of the cabin of the vehicle all right and then put it back in that way all right as you see there's plenty of space in this vehicle i mean uh i i love it the sea warmers, oh, what was I about to say? The sea warmers, perfect for this temperature, or for correction, for this weather. Um, the steering wheel of this vehicle is nice and soft, um, but it's firm. Makes you feel like you have 100% control of the vehicle. There's no slouch in the uh, steering response. It's very responsive. Um, but let's take this thing for a drive. But before we take it for a drive, I want to show you guys the backseat area, okay? All right, so remember I was telling you guys about the trim that was all plastic around the vehicle that helped to, uh, when you want to clean the car, if you spill something, you don't worry about, oh, you're staining your headline. Here it is again. It's plastic, okay? Now, for the dash, Chevy actually used a leather, okay? This is all leather. This is not so much leather. It looks like it is, but this is actually plastic okay. this is plastic but again it looks very nice it's, it's a it's a nice smooth clean transition from the center console to the door panel i mean they they definitely and oh this is this is leather as well okay this is leather too this is leather that's plastic okay leather obviously steering wheel the heated steering wheel as well um there's your controls from all your windshield wipers uh, there's no obviously you don't see there's no center console or uh, shifter okay the shifter is located right here old school style which is fine it's an SUV it should be all right but 
Let's go into the back seat. Now that I'm a little bit warmer. Back seat. For like I said, for these kids. Here you got your cup holders. Okay, the kids can put their drinks here. Don't recommend you put a drink here. Don't allow them to slam the door. Because think about it, you put a drink here and you forget to you don't have a top or a lid on and they slam the door. Just imagine. You just spill drink all on your door and inside your car. Okay. Bowl stereo system. I didn't show you guys. Bose, like I said, Bose stereo system. Very clean sounding big uh, system. All right. Um, they can roll the windows down. That's about it back here. They can lock the doors. Um, there you go, kids. Hiding remotes and stuff. Oh, shoot. Hiding remotes and stuff. Doesn't go there. Everything has a place. All right, here I am in the back seat. And I'm 5'9". I mean, look how much leg room I have. It's plenty of leg room, okay? Plenty. Um, there's the rear controls. This is another storage compartment. Charlotte's Web. Oops, sorry. Okay. Here's your typical home outlet controls. They can turn the speed up. They can turn it down. They can turn the temperature up, low, however you want to do it. Mo, one thing that's cool about here, with the LTZ models, because the LTZ models come with this, you have the different modes. You have heated seats, okay? It's cold out here. The kids can actually warm the seats back here. The passenger and the driver are not the only ones that are getting spoiled like that. And then here again, you have your 12 volt adapter connection, okay? Now, USB connection, RCA connections, headphone jack, turn the headphone up and down, and your SD card, okay? Now, your SD card, that's where you can load your movies on so the kids can watch the different movies, okay? Um, push that button. There's your screen, okay? Again, this has two screens. Boom, boom. Here's a remote. Now, this is a, 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 a crazy remote. I've never seen it before. I'm not sure why they decided to do it like this, maybe like a video game. But um, if you want to control different things on, this, on the uh, screens, screen one and screen two. Okay. You can either listen to the radio, watch a movie, you name it, you can do it. Okay. The screen is pretty big. I mean, this is my hand. I mean, it's it's huge. The kids will definitely enjoy it. And the proper location for this is right here. When you're done, when the kids are done with it, you put it right in there. Okay. Boom. All right. Now the vents, it's vents everywhere. Here, 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 okay. And then also, they can enjoy the uh, the the heat from the floor as well, okay. You got your storage compartments here. I never really use these, but maybe you want to put papers in there, CDs. I don't like storing stuff in there because it gets forgotten. Now, like I said, I have a seven-month-old child, a son, my little baby boy, and. It's a little seat protector. You gotta have, especially with the milk getting everywhere. But as you see, it has the child locks. The little, two little bars on each seat allow you to lock in your child seat's base, okay? And we have a little loving, like I said. We, uh, Nuna has an awesome line of child uh, car seats and strollers. And we decided my wife wanted Nuna because she did her research on it. And um, I love it. I love it. Now you see here, we're a little out of the range for being leveled. But again, it's based on your uh, settings that you want to have it at. Okay. Now you see this carpet, the mats. We're going to, we're ordering the WeatherTech because again, what we were talking about earlier protecting your carpet okay weather tech makes one that covers under the seats here and back here so you don't have your carpet getting ruined so it always looks that always looks brand new especially for resale okay here's the back seats all right let's go take a stroll back here and as y'all can see this is the version with not the bench seat but with the captain chairs or also known as the bucket seats all right way back here i'm in the back seat 
again i am five nine i still got room to relax if i was a little taller okay now one thing i will say these little uh seat rests or headrests they gotta come up because they all in my back okay you just pull them up and adjust them okay got my drink holder right here I can lay my arm right here. As you see, lay my arm on there. Almost, honestly, it feels like I'm on the window seat of an airplane, okay? And you got two more cup holders. And guess what? You got another 12 volt connection here. Charging your phone, game system, whatever the kids have back here. All right. Now, remember I was telling you guys about this latch. This latch gets installed right here, okay? Simple. Um, Another thing that's cool about this vehicle with the LTZ models, I can fold the seat down from being in the back seat. All right, see that button right there? I just push that button. Boom, seat went down just like that. Oh, and I wanna get out the vehicle. Let's push it one more time. And there it goes. Now I can exit the vehicle and the seat not be in the way. Now, I don't, I know I'm not hurting anything, but the fact that every time someone does this, you know, if the kids do it, and you hear this loud bang in order to reinstall the seat back into the floorboard, you gotta slam it. It almost seems like somebody's hitting your car. I'm not a fan of that, but I'm fortunate to have that feature. Chevy had to figure out a way. So that was the one they came up with. And then you just fold the seat. Sorry, you fold the seat back up. And you're done. And, like I said, you can do that from the back seat. I mean, sorry, from the, the rear of the vehicle. Along with the controls I sold you for these seats. All right. Um, now, one thing that's not a, uh, another thing that's not so cool about this vehicle is the screens. You see, I have a straight shot for the mirror now once i fold the screen down and that screen down let's fold that one down too what do you see uh you see charlotte webb but you can't see a rear view mirror so when you have these screens down you can't use your rear view mirror you can't see behind you you're going to use your actual side mirrors that is a downfall but again it all depends on what's important to you and if you're a good driver, you've been driving for a couple years, that's okay. If you're on a freeway, you'll be able to see, don't worry. And some people may opt for the screens and the headrests, you know. I'm not a fan of that because I'm not sure, I don't think Chevy has it as an option. It's either the screens in the uh, headliner or no screens at all. So I'm fine with it, you know. Whatever works for you, you decide that. Ugh. Okay, what was uh, some other things? You got some nice little handles right there. Now visibility, I'm not gonna lie, when you're switching lanes in this vehicle, um, you gotta almost turn your head all the way because it's a, it's a lot of blind spots. I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of blind spots. But like I said, again, having that um, collision avoidance uh, feature, it helps a lot with driving this big old SUV. If you're switching lanes, uh, let's go. Let's, let me show you guys. <laughs> Get old. Let me show you guys. Okay, so you see here, we got the when the blinkers on, that lights up for people behind you. And you see here, you got a a star for collision alert on the side of you. And then also the car lights up. Okay. It's sensors from the corner rear of the vehicle all the way around here and to the front end of the vehicle. All right. That lets that protects you. So let's say for instance, which I was experiencing when I picked it up and driving it back from Ohio. Um, when I wanted to pass someone, it it was lit. Like I'm driving, you driving in a three lane freeway, you know, and you want to, 
you don't know whether or not you have enough clearance to go and switch lanes to that car you can still see in your rear view well when that light goes out in the rear view when that light goes out you have you can move over you're safe so when that light's on don't shift lanes but when that light goes out you can shift lanes all right um so let's take this bad boy for a drive all right let's go and take this thing for a drive so you guys can see how it actually feels it's a very smooth riding vehicle i mean the reason why i went with the ltz package was it comes with magnetic ride control. The same thing that comes in the GMC Yukon Denali. It's the same thing that comes in Cadillac Escalade. Only comes in the LTZ models. Oh, there's my stick. Only comes in the LTZ models. It doesn't come in the LT models. Okay. When you're spending this kind of money, you might as well go ahead and get all the options because I've definitely bought vehicles in the past where I said, you know what, I don't need that option. And later on, after owning the vehicle, you're like, man, I wish I would've had that option. I wish I would've got it. And it's too late. You can't go back and get it unless you're gonna go try to find another vehicle, the same vehicle, just for an option. No one does that, okay? So we went ahead and got every option possible for this vehicle, just in case um, we needed it. My wife, she really wanted a head-up display. That's hard to find in, in a lot of these vehicles. Um, I wanted four-wheel drive to be on the safe side if it's flooding or if I need to go off road, I have it there, ready to go, okay? Um, like I said, the steering of this vehicle is very responsive, it's very smooth. It's not, you don't feel like you're, you're turning an old school mechanical steering linkage or anything like that. Um, it's not no slop, it's very smooth and responsive, okay? Um, it makes you feel like, honestly, driving this vehicle, you're not driving a big old Chevy Suburban. I feel like you're driving a small little F-150 pickup or something like that. Okay. Now, a downside, and maybe because I'm not used to driving a four-wheel drive vehicle, um, I'm used to driving two-wheel drive. Um, when you're driving slow speeds in the Chevy Suburban, it does seem like the transmission is trying to figure out what gear it wants to be in. And the it feels a little rough, like you feel the drive shaft spinning. I, again, this is my first uh, four-wheel drive vehicle with this new technology, and maybe that's just something that's standard. Now, when you get up to speeds of 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, uh, it's not that bad. It's very smooth, you don't feel it. So it's only at low speeds, only at low speeds. Uh, the get up in a 5.3, it's not bad. We thought about going for a 6.2, which was in the GMC Yukon Denali, but it has less of fuel economy um, than the 5.3. And then also, hold on. And then we took out a 5.3 as a rental to do a road trip to see how we liked it. And we were getting 20 miles to a gallon. I'm not sure why I'm not getting it yet, but again, it depends on how you drive it. Um, I may have been doing 75 instead of 80. Uh, that's the reason why it's changing my gas mileage. But you know, just normal cruising around town, it's, it's, it's a nice ride. It's a very nice, smooth ride. Um, when you want to punch it, it goes. I mean, I get up to speed real quick. So the 6.2, again, it's a bigger motor. It's 420 horsepower versus the 5.3, 355 horsepower. It's plenty for this vehicle. You want to pass somebody? Yeah, it's not going to be a Lambo. You punch it and boom, you're going to go right by him. No, because you got a long vehicle. I mean, look how far back you can see, okay? But it's enough power. 